Good afternoon, I'm Mai Rodriguez. This is News Speed at noon on BNC, the Billionario News Channel. The headlines today, China accuses the Philippines of illegally entering the waters near Ayungan Shoal and deliberately collided with a Chinese ship. Some Calabarzon towns suspend classes due to the volcanic smog from Taal Volcano. We have this just in. The Philippines confirms its first case of the new Mpox variant. The health department says the 33-year-old patient has had no travel history. The World Health Organization has declared Mpox a public health emergency with outbreaks reported in Africa and cases being detected in Europe and Asia. We'll give you more details as they become available. China accuses the Philippines of dangerous behavior in the South China Sea. China's Coast Guard claims two Philippine Coast Guard vessels illegally entered Chinese waters and one of them deliberately collided with a Chinese ship in waters near Ayungin Shoal. Beijing warns Manila to stop causing trouble or bear all the consequences. The Philippine Coast Guard has yet to comment on the matter. Last month, both sides reached an agreement to prevent tensions from escalating after repeated confrontations during Philippine resupply missions to its troops stationed on the BRP Sierra Madre in Ayungin Shoal. The National Task Force on the West Philippine Sea, meanwhile, insists it was China that displayed aggressive behavior in disputed waters. Jonathan Malaya, the Assistant Director General, of the National Security Council says the unlawful maneuvers of Chinese vessels led to the collision with Philippine Coast Guard ships. Despite these incidents, both PCG vessels remain committed to and shall proceed with their missions of delivering essential supplies to personal stations on Patak and Laiwak Islands. The PCG stands firm in its responsibility to ensure the safety and security of our maritime domain while addressing any and all threats to our national interest. Former Chief Presidential Legal Counsel Sal Panelo is pointing at former Senator Sonny Trillanes as one of the people behind alleged attempts to destroy the reputation of the Dutertes. During Billionaria News Channel's interview on At the Forefront, Panelo was asked about ex-customs officer Jimmy Guban linking Congressman Paolo Duterte and Vice President Sara Duterte's husband, Man Scarpio, to illegal drugs. Julianes recently filed smuggling and graft complaints against Paolo Duterte, Man Scarpio, and former Customs Commissioner Nicanor Faildon in connection with a 6.4 billion peso shabu shipment seized in 2017. Meanwhile, Panelo also criticized the Marcos administration's approach against illegal drugs. Apparently, this person is being hired, fed by those against the Dutertes. And one of them, of course, is uh, the senator you, former senator you mentioned, who is back on his wicked ways. His style is always be in the headlines. Why? Because he is going to run for a public office this midterm elections. The Senate Finance Committee's hearing on the proposed 2025 budgets of government agencies is underway. Right now, the panel is tackling the funding request of the Budget Department and its attached agencies. Also being deliberated today are allocations to local government units and the Bangsamoro region and lump sum funds. House Speaker Martin Romualdez is among the top-level guests at the Bagong Pilipinas Serbisho Fair being held in Pasay City. Hanati is there to tell us more about the House Leader's speech and the proposal of organizers for a Bagong Pilipinas bill. Hana, go ahead. Maya, a significant milestone has been reached here at the Bagong Pilipinas Serbisho Fair Agency Summit. 
This initiative, which was launched just a year ago, has successfully conducted 21 events across all 70 regions of the country, direct, directly impacting around 2.5 million Filipino families. These fairs have delivered nearly 10 billion worth of essential services and projects, ranging from cash assistance to vital health care. House Speaker Martin Romualdez emphasized today that this initiative goes beyond just service delivery. It's about making real, tangible improvements in the lives of our people. Whether it's a farmer gaining access to much-needed resources or a student finding new hope in education, the impact is undeniable. My in a significant development, the BPSF team is proposing a new legislative measure to institutionalize these efforts. The proposed Bagong Pilipinas Bill aims to establish permanent service centers centers in every province, ensuring that government services are accessible, efficient, and always within reach. My later this evening, President Bongbong Marcos Jr. is expected to attend the Gabi ng Pagkakaisa here at the summit where agencies that have played key roles in this initiative will be recognized for their contributions. Back to you. Thank you. Hannah T. there reporting. The Court of Tax Appeals voids the Bureau of Internal Revenue's 3.76 billion peso tax claim against Alpha Land Southgate. The ruling found that the tax demand was invalid due to the lack of authority of the revenue officer who signed the assessment. The CTA also rejected the BIR's argument that Alpha Land Southgate's petition was late and prohibited the BIR from collecting any amount related to the disputed assessment. The BIR started its investigation into Alpha Land Southgate back in March 2016 with the issuance of a letter of authority to examine the company's financial records. The case was challenged in 2021 by the firm owned by the late businessman and former trade secretary Roberto Bobby Ongpin. President Bongbong Marcos touts the country's recent A- credit rating given by a debt watcher based in Japan. Marcos says the latest assessment from Rating and Investment in Information, or RNI, reflects investor confidence in the economic strength of the Philippines. The president is confident this will help the nation attract more foreign investments, reduce borrowing costs, and enable more affordable financing for the government, businesses, and consumers alike. Marcos vows all Filipinos will benefit from the economic growth. RNI says the upgrade in the Philippines' credit rating from triple B plus last year comes on the back of macroeconomic stability, high economic growth path, and favorable fiscal outlook. This is only the second A-level investment grade rating of the Philippines. The first was in 2020 from Japan's Credit Rating Agency, or JCR. When Newsfeed at Noon returns, Ukraine's Air Force destroys another strategic bridge over the same river in Kursk, Russia. Welcome back. You're still watching Newsfeed at Noon. Some towns in Calabarzon have suspended classes today due to high levels of volcanic smog or VOG from Taal Volcano. According to FIVOX, wind conditions and the voluminous steaming from Taal Volcano caused the VOG to spread to surrounding towns. Majority of the areas are in the province of Batangas near the volcano, but Alfonso, Silang and Indang in Cavite and Binyan and Calamba in Laguna also suspended classes due to the VOG. PVOX defines VOG as fine droplets containing volcanic gas such as sulfur dioxide, an acidic substance which can cause irritation of the eyes, throat, and the respiratory tract. With us now on the line is Ms. Maria Antonia Bornas, the Chief Volcanic Monitoring and Eruption Prediction Division of FIVOX. Good afternoon, Ms. Bornas. Good afternoon, po, ma'am. Based on your monitoring, what is now the condition around uh, the areas in Taal? Okay, uh, so uh, FIVOX has been monitoring volcanic sulfur dioxide emissions since March 2021 when the emissions 
started to increase. So this uh, August, actually since July, the sulfur dioxide emissions have not been significantly high. The last uh, measurement that we undertook last August 15 was around 3,355 tons per day. This is quite low compared to the uh, emissions that we have been measuring at the start of the year, in the first few months, when emissions rose above 10,000 tons per day. And if you recall, our sulfur dioxide emissions in 2021 actually peaked at uh, 25, more than 25,000 tons per day. So sulfur dioxide emission has not been significant, but what is happening right now is that we have very low wind speed. You know? If you notice outside, there is almost no wind. And uh, aside from this, there, there is a layer of high pressure at the upper atmosphere, according to Pagasa. And all of these factors are actually preventing whatever low uh, volumes of sulfur dioxide are that are being emitted from the volcano from circulating out of the region so what has been uh, exhaled by the volcano in the past four to five days have remained over the taal region causing the formation of bog yeah well do you expect it to continue and how far do our experts expect it to spread I'm sorry, ma'am. Can you repeat the question? I can barely understand. Yes. Do you expect the volcanic smog to continue, and how long will this be, and how far is it projected to spread? Okay. So long as the wind speeds are not picking up, meaning if we have very low wind speeds, uh, there will we will have uh, the formation of vol quite uh, um, sustained. Uh, over the Taal region because right now there is no picking up of the wind and the high pressure level at the upper atmosphere is still there. No? So if the wind starts to pick up then uh, uh, and if we have very high wind speeds or if we experience rain so this the wind speeds, increased wind speeds will blow out the sulfur dioxide and the rains will actually uh, uh, cleanse or what we uh, the term that we use is scrub it will scrub the sulfur dioxide from the atmosphere no so long as hindi pa nagto pick up ang wind so if you have been given so we have high sulfur dioxide very high but the wind is very strong so we do not have any bog over the area yeah. well how should affected areas then or the affected communities respond uh right now um because the impacts of volcanic smog are actually being collated by the Office of the Civil Defense. So we, until right now, we're still also waiting for the situation re situational report from them. Because the pollution of uh, the air, even volcanic pollution, is something that we walk just at monitor. No? I mean, the monitor po natin, what we monitor is actually what is coming out of the volcano itself. Ma'am, uh, let's go to Mount Kanlaon, which you're also monitoring. Uh, give us an update, please, on the situation there, because I understand it is now on alert level 2. Yes. Okay, so Kanlaon Volcano has been at alert level 2 since it erupted last June 3. Until now, we've had very high emissions of sulfur dioxide. The last um, measurement yesterday recorded uh, about 3,599 per day. And uh, in August 12, on August 12, we recorded the highest sulfur dioxide emission from the volcano, which exceeded 7,000 tons per day. Now, these are very high emissions of sulfur dioxide, meaning that we already have a magma no, uh, uh, beneath the volcano that is actually producing a lot of sulfur dioxide. And the emissions have not been uh, they have been sustained, no, which are way beyond above the 300 tons per day background levels of volcanic sulfur dioxide emission from the volcano. Mm -hmm. They've also had sustained uh, seismicity or volcanic earthquakes. No? So normally we average around between five to nine earthquakes per day. This is actually beyond the normal uh, register of volcanic earthquakes per day of uh, on volcano and so sometimes we have 
days where we have a lot no, of volcanic earthquakes. Mm. And, of course, the volcano is pressurized based on our ground deformation monitoring. Mm. Ma'am, so ano po ang advice sa ngayon sa mga residente doon na posibleng maapektuhan, may ine-expect po ba kayong uh, major activity from Mount Canlaon? Okay, so we've had uh, uh, two scenarios, both which requires, of course, in the minimum that the 4-kilometer permanent danger zone be prohibited from entry. No? Unfortunately, there are already populations living within the 4-kilometer permanent danger zone. So this is something that the LGUs have to manage. No? Um, our scenario is that we will have a sustained unrest for a long period of time. That's the first scenario. And the second scenario is that this will actually uh, eventually lead to a major a magmatic eruption, which we have not experienced from Tanlaon Volcano since 1962. Uh -huh. Okay, maraming salamat po. Thank you for your time, ma'am. That was Maria Antonia Bornas from the Philippines. Ukraine's Air Force destroys another strategic bridge over the same river in Kursk, Russia. Kiev says the operation aims to limit the supply capabilities of Russian troops trying to stop Ukraine's incursion. The bridge is the second destroyed since Ukrainian forces launched a surprise attack on Kursk early this month. The Russia-Ukraine war erupted in February 2022. Portuguese firefighters scrambled to put out a wildfire sweeping parts of the island of Madeira Sunday. The wildfire, which started on Wednesday in a remote rural area of Ribeira Brava, has spread to the neighboring municipality of Camara de Lobos. Around 200 firefighters are combating the flames, complicated by low humidity and strong winds. 160 people have been evacuated for precaution, but no injuries or fatalities are reported. And finally, in Mexico, tattoo artists showcased their work during the 5th Tattoo Convention Sunday. Both local and international tattoo artists took part, displaying a variety of aesthetic styles. 39-year-old Rocio Rangel laid on her stomach as artist Lillian Raya tattooed on her back, a design featuring Medusa and a phoenix. The convention serves as a platform for customers and tattoo artists to participate in a lecture on various topics including tattoo care, photography and studio management. And those are the news this hour. I'm Mai Rodriguez. Stay tuned to BNC for more top of the hour news on Free TV Channel 31 and also on our website bnc.ph. Billionaire News Channel, always on top. Good afternoon.